Back here in Open Mic on 7th for the game. Of course, it's racing week up in Daytona. Lots of racing to get to. Daytona 500 coming this weekend and uh, plenty of other races uh, leading up to the big one this weekend, Mike. But right now we have a sp- very special guest. He is Jeff Earnhardt, the grandson of the late Dale Earnhardt. He is racing in the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series this week over in Daytona. Jeff, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Jeff, what are you, what are your thoughts? Obviously, this is a very emotional week for the whole Earnhardt family, the 10-year anniversary of your grandfather's death in Daytona. Just Just talk to us a little bit about the feelings and emotions going through your head this week? Um, I mean, obviously it's, um, it's, it is tough, but, you know, it's also, um, very cool too, because, you know, it's, it's a track that my grandfather was very, very well known at and, um, just dominated in many races. And, you know, just the, the thought of possibly going and putting on a good run for, you know, this, 10th year anniversary and um you know to to go and continue the Earnhardt name you know running good at Daytona would be just an awesome weekend and um made me feel real good but um you know it's it is it's it's sad to go there and know that you know that's where um we lost him and you know it's tough but you know I, I know that he would want everyone you know to just keep on going and um, I think that's something he was real big on to, you know, make sure everybody kept doing their thing no matter what happened. And, um, you know, that, that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to keep trying to, you know, keep the Earnhardt fans proud and um, try and start winning races and, you know, bring bring the Earnhardt name back because, you know, it has started to die down. And, you know, you, you still got tons of Earnhardt fans, but, you know, Doug Jr. has been struggling and, you know, I've, I've just started coming up through the ranks, so, you know, Doug Jr. seems to be turning some things around, and, you know, he's, you know, qualified on pole and um, should have a pretty good run, and hopefully we can do the same. Jeff, well, you were 10 years old, I believe, when 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 Dale passed away at Daytona. What are your memories of that day? I mean, obviously you were very young. Did, did it in, impact you fully back then? Um. Not, not as much because at first it almost seemed unreal, you know, like almost like a dream or something because, you know, to me he was like a superhero that, you know, that couldn't die. I mean, he was he was such a big hero in my life and such a, I mean, even to me, someone that was just like, you know, kind of starstruck me as a kid, you know, even though he was my grandfather, he was still like, you know, it was like, wow, you know, people, you know, are crazy over this guy and um you know, it was it was kind of hard to take in at first because you know you don't want to believe it really happened and you don't want to you know you don't want to i guess get upset about it mm-hmm. because you, you know it's it's not something that he would want because he you know he was big on making sure everybody kept doing their thing and you know it didn't change and so i mean it was tough and it was hard to take in and hard to believe but you know, I mean, once it did that, and you know, it was it was pretty hard on all of us, I believe. Of course, fans get to see a certain side of some of their favorite athletes, but of course, with uh, Dale being your your grandfather, what's a side of him or a memory that you can share of, of something that maybe a lot of fans didn't know about the man? Well, he was <laughs> he wasn't just intimidating to um, other people; he was definitely intimidating to me too as his grandson. <laughs> I mean, um, I remember I used to always call him Papa Dale, and he would never answer to me. He'd he'd always tell me that the only way he'd answer to me is if I called him Mr. Earnhardt. Said Paul Waddell made him feel old. So um, <laughs> you gotta call uh, me was, the Intimidator, son. Yeah, yeah. He was um, he was he was a very very cool man. That's for sure. He was very cool to have as a grandfather. And um, I remember another event where um, he had bought me and my brother a go kart and set up some tires out in the parking lot, and we were driving around in the parking lot there at the at DI or what's DI now. Back back then it was just a little small shop, but um I remember I was driving and I ran into a fence and I busted my lip on the steering wheel and uh I was, I was I was terrified to get back on it. I was I was very young. I can't remember how old I was, but um he ended up talking me back into getting on it. It was it was pretty neat. But um 
you know, he was he was a great man. He was he was a great guy to be around and um, was liked by many people. Jeff uh, Dale Jr. has talked recently about just you you know the the pressure of the Earnhardt name after Dale passed away. It's like you mentioned earlier. Yeah, people wanted him to con- continue the Ear- Earnhardt excellence. Do you feel that pressure, even though you're just getting started, going through the ranks? Yeah, I mean, um, people people automatically assume that just because your last name, you're gonna you know go out and win races, and you know it really doesn't go that way. I mean, you know, you still gotta learn just like everybody else does, and um, you know, you gotta you know do everything one step at a time, just like everybody else does, and um, you know, it's kind of tough because you know because like I said, people do expect you to win all the time, but um, you know, it's. It's really all the amount of pressure you let get to you. I mean, people can say that stuff, but until you really let it bother you, then you know it really, really isn't going to affect you. And that's something that I've been trying to work really hard at is not let you know the things that people say influence me on you know how I drive or what I do and um, my choices in life. So um, you can't let people, what people say you know put you down. Jeff, just tell us about truck racing what do you what do you like about it how does it differ from racing the cars and how long do you expect to be in trucks before maybe you can move up um the trucks are i mean they're they're really cool the i mean the the competitors in it are just great guys i mean you know just a bunch of really good people that are willing to help young drivers coming up and um you know, there's a lot, there's a lot of veterans in there that's been around forever and um, really know the sport. But um, you know, it's it's a lot of fun. They're they're a lot different than a than a car for sure. They 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 seem to be real aero sensitive to me um, compared to a car. Um, they seem to rely on the body a lot more than a car would, and um, just, uh, just a whole lot different to drive. That's for sure. But um, I mean, I'd say we could probably look at maybe doing like a full year this year and hopefully being in nationwide next year for a full season i mean that's that seems to be our goal and um what we are you know working towards doing obviously that's going to depend on sponsorship and what we can find to you know to to fund that but um as of right now we're just you know focused on this year and you know getting all the seat time i can to you know better myself as a driver and you know advance my career when did you know you wanted to 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 follow the family tradition and become a racer and did you ever want to do anything else? Um, I never really got into racing until I was about twelve and I used to hang out at this dirt track in Virginia where my um stepmom was from. And they started this class where you could be twelve and older to to run and I started as soon as I heard that I got all excited and was like die a race and um it actually took me two years to convince my parents and to let me. So, um I ended up going out, buying a car, a sponsorship and sponsorship and everything and uh once I did that my parents finally gave in and said, All right, you know, you did the work now, um, you can go race and you know, I went and did my thing and, you know, took off from there. But um you know, I really haven't wanted to do anything other than race. I mean, I, I really do enjoy doing it. It's uh, it's a huge thrill, and, you know, it's something I, I get a, a whole lot of excitement out of. You know, I, I, uh, like like I said, it's about all I've been around my whole entire life, and I guess whenever you're around it your whole life, it, you know, kind of grows on you. And, you know, it's, it's definitely what I want to do, and, you know, no one's made that decision for me. It's been, you know, solely my own decision. Like I said, I had to beg, beg my parents to let me race. So, um, you know, that's definitely my choice and um, the career path I, I, I chose to take. Why would you have to beg your parents to let you race? It seems like that would be, hey, you're going to race. What? <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I, th- <laughs> I think their biggest thing was to make sure that I knew all the work that went into it before I decided to jump into it, you know, because um, they didn't want, you know, they didn't want to just hand me everything, and mm-hmm. you know they didn't. They they made me work for everything I got, and you know that's that's another tough thing. A lot of people automatically assume that I had everything handed to me, and you know it, it wasn't like that. You know, I, everybody says because my last name is the only reason I'm in the sport, but um, 
you know, I, I worked hard to get to where I'm at, and, um, you know, I, I even branched away from DEI and, you know, went out and did my own thing and, you know, worked, you know, got my own business partners and found, you know, my own ride and all that. So just to try and, you know, eliminate all that talk about the only reason he's driving is because he's driving for his grandfather's company and all that because, you know, it, it it's upsetting to hear people say that, but, um, you know, hopefully this year will be a, a statement to people to prove to them that, you know, I'm doing this because, you know, of my talent and, you know, my will to do it. That's got to be, that That really does, though, that has to be bothersome when people say that, that, hey, you if if your last name was Jones or Smith, you wouldn't even be in a race car. I mean, has it ever got to a point where you just wanted to tell somebody, you know, fight them or, or, or tell them, hey, I'm a good driver? Um, I mean, you know, re- really, it's like it's not something you really just come out and express mm-hmm. because you know you you want to be the bigger person and um, you know, just prove them wrong. That's that's the thing. You know, you you go out there and prove them wrong, then you know they're the ones that look stupid, not you. So, um, that's my goal. Is you know, if someone says something negative, you just go out and prove them wrong. Don't say nothing back. Just go prove them wrong, and then then they then they can't say anything. So. You know, that's, that's my goal is to, you know, prove people that I'm out here doing this because, you know, of my talent and my will to do it, and, you know, I'm going to do it. You know, I'm a firm believer that, you know, whether there's a will or the way, and if you really want something bad enough, you know, you'll you'll get it. So, um, you know, you just got to keep pushing. You can't quit. He is Jeff Earnhardt, the grandson of the late, great Dale Earnhardt. Jeff, good luck this week at Daytona. We wish you... The best of luck, and uh, hope to have you again on the show. I appreciate it, and um, have to watch for the number one fuel doctor, Chevrolet. Yeah, we will be. You gonna win? <laughs> Give us a prediction. Of course. Um, I mean it's Daytona, so anything can happen. But um, we're definitely not gonna go out there and not try. That's for sure. Okay, for practice, real quickly. So you you say you're gonna win. Give us your 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 post victory speech because you've got to mention all your sponsors correctly too. I gotta thank Fuel Doctor, Fast Wax, and all the fans for cheering me on. How's that? Love it. Love it. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> thank you. Just-